Hello guys and thank you for joining me today. So today we're in the Peak District National Park again to try and capture the Three Shire Heads waterfall. So I parked uh, a little way out further than you uh, probably need to to get there but I wanted to incorporate this gorgeous uh, little walk we've got here. It's about four miles circular route back to the car where I've parked and we've got this lovely stream running through this woodland here and it's just absolutely gorgeous it really is. So yeah we've got about two miles to get there um, then we're going to take some shots. Hopefully I'm going to find some nice compositions on the way as well, you never know. Um, and that's really, really why I've decided to park further afield and, and have a nice walk. I mean, today is just absolutely beautiful, it really is. It's probably spring weather at last, you know. But um, also we're going to be taking part in a landscape photography on YouTube UK's Facebook monthly challenge, which this month is black and white. So I think uh, the Three Shy Heads waterfall could work really really well in black and white because we've uh, got some really nice texture of the water coming over the boulders there with pack horse uh, bridge in the back there so hopefully that I've not been before so hopefully it'll be really really good and um, hopefully the weather's going to be kind to us as well and hopefully we'll find some nice compositions on the way so uh, catch you in a bit guys Wow, well I thought I'd just take a little break for five minutes and uh, just check out my maps. <laughs> so I didn't, I didn't have an Ordnance Survey map for this area, so last night I uh, printed off some details. Um, printed them all off as a PDF document, but I didn't check them, I just pulled them out of the printer. <laughs> and it turns out that the uh, printer's run out of ink. So, <laughs> so I've got some descriptions, but all, the, uh, all of the photographs with the kind of waymark points on it uh just not readable so <laughs> that's quite interesting but i think i can see the um i think i can see the river down the bottom of the valley so um i think i'm on the right track so i'm gonna head down there in a minute and uh see see if we uh, are heading in the right direction i've got a feeling it's kind of over that way somewhere so uh there's, there's no path across here at all it's just a field so um hopefully i'm heading in the right direction but um who knows? So as I was walking through, I was kind of thinking about black and white photography. And uh, for me, I, I find it really rewarding if you um, set out to take a black and white image right at the start. So as you're composing the shot, as you're looking for a shot, I think it's much more rewarding to do it that way as to retrospectively convert a colour photograph into black and white later on in Lightroom or Photoshop. So yeah, it's really, really nice just to be able to kind of look at the scene see what you really want to try and pull out of the scene in terms of highlights, shadows, texture and light, composition, all of those things can really enhance a black and white photograph because you're taking so much away so you really really need to make sure you've got everything really nice and a really strong composition and, and, and the light's really good so I, I think you know I think there's something really rewarding about searching and looking for a black and white photograph and taking it now I use the black and white preview in the back of the camera as well to help me with this and it does really help so if you've got that you know in your camera use it because it you know it can really help kind of you know actually see what, what's going to work and what's not going to work when you're actually out in the field so I definitely give that a try that really really helps me anyway so yeah I am going to get my butt down there and uh, see if I can find a path <laughs> So I found this 
really nice composition here. We've got a lone tree kind of coming out of this dry stone wall, which looks really, really cool. We've got this lovely flowing water coming through these rocks just here, which really makes a nice foreground interest. Um, it looks really, really good. I've looked at the preview on the back of the camera in black and white, and it really, really looks quite nice in the back of the camera. So hopefully it should be a, a decent shot. Now, the only trouble with this, <laughs> I've got a dead sheep right next to me here. I'm not going to show it to you because it's like eyeballs are like missing and all sorts, but it's pretty minging. So <laughs> I've quickly taken the shot. I'm not going to spend too much time here because uh, the smell is, even though it's winter, is, is pretty bad. And the only place I could put my bag was literally like a foot away from it. So it's absolutely disgusting. So I'm not going to do too much B-roll here. I'll show you the shot, guys. Hope you enjoy it. <laughs> Cheers. So guys, I've come away from the waterfall just for a minute because it's so loud down there, really quite difficult for the audio to come through nice and clean. So um, I just thought I'd uh, talk you through what I've been doing. I've set up a couple of different shots. One's a panoramic shot, which incorporates both of the waterfalls, which is kind of the iconic shot from this location because it is a well photographed spot. And uh, I can see why, because it's absolutely gorgeous. It really is, it's beautiful. And there was about five photographers here when I first turned up, so they were all having fun, enjoying themselves, uh, a little chat with them, they were, they were pretty cool. So, uh, but I've got a place myself now, so, which is really nice. So I'm going to take a few more shots, um, maybe some intimate ones, and I'll put them at the end so you can have a quick look at them and let me know what you think. So the camera's set up on the tripod and I'm going to be shooting a series of five images to create a panoramic shot. I've got the 18mm f2 lens on and this is compressing the distance between the foreground and the two waterfalls. So I think if I use a wide lens on this I think the distance would be a lot larger and maybe the, the waterfalls and the bridges wouldn't be so prominent in the, in the photograph. Shooting a panoramic image at 18mm really helps compress that depth. So I've also got a three-stop filter on and a circular polarizer. Now the three stop filter is going to be about a half, a half a second exposure, which is slowing down the water just nicely without losing any detail. Any slower, and I think it would look too smooth and, and all those details would be lost. So I've also got a circular polarizer on the camera as well. Now I'm not using this to take the glare off the water, so what I'm using this for is to control the shadows and the highlights. So whilst I'm looking at the black and white preview on the screen, I can rotate the circular polarizer just to make the details pop. So I don't want to get rid of all the highlights and the glare like you might do if you were shooting a colour image. I want to accentuate the highlights and the shadows so I can just rotate the polarizer to achieve this. So I decided to come a bit further down the stream and take a shot looking up towards Pack Horse Bridge and the lone tree there which is kind of silhouetted against the bright sky there. Now I had to wait a good 20 minutes to capture this shot because the sun was very bright on the hill in the back there and I couldn't balance the exposure properly and using a graduated filter was difficult because of the shape of the landscape. So it was just a waiting game really and as soon as the sun went behind the cloud I was then able to take the shot. Now I've, again I've used a three stop ND filter and a circular polarizer 
to achieve about a half a second exposure to capture that lovely movement in the water but not smoothing it out completely that you are losing those lovely details that you can see. Now the circular polarizer again like I used in the panoramic shot is really just to bring out the highlights and the shadows. I didn't want to take the glare off the water, I wanted to be able to accentuate the highlights and uh, really kind of make the water pop and uh, show all the little ripples and details as the water moved throughout the scene. I really like this shot and I hope you guys do as well. Let me know, let me know which you prefer, if you prefer the panoramic or, or this one. So guys, that's pretty much it for today. Um, just you know, drop me a comment, let me know which pictures you prefer, and uh, jump onto the Facebook group as well. I'll leave the link in the description so you can go and check that out. But uh, you can join the group, it's for anybody. And it's a great way of meeting some of the UK's finest landscape uh, vloggers, um, see what everybody's doing behind the scenes. Everybody's on there chatting away, so you can uh, join in as well. It's, uh, it's a really good community. So yeah, I'll leave the uh, link below. Go and uh, check that out, guys. So again, guys, thanks for watching. I really, really appreciate that. Um, it's been a great day, really enjoyed it. Great weather. Um, you know, if you want to subscribe to the channel, guys, I would really, really appreciate that. It means the world to me. Hit the old thumbs up button as well. That's great. And uh, drop us a comment, because I'd love to talk to you about anything photography related. Okay, guys, take care. See you next time.